In 1960, there were 980,000 Asian Americans registered in U.S. Census data, according to the Pew Research Center. Fast forward to 2019, and there were 22.4 million, a number that's expected to more than double by 2060, at which point Pew says the number of immigrants from Asia will have surpassed Hispanic, white, and black immigrants in the U.S. For Asia-focused companies offering a taste of home, that could be big business. I'm Christy Lou Stout, coming to you from Los Angeles on this special episode of Marketplace Asia. On today's program, we visit an online retailer that is hoping to tap into the Asian American market and growing demand from non-Asian customers as well. We discuss the startup's plans for expansion despite supply chain challenges and inflation on the rise. Plus, we meet with Christine Tsai, the CEO of 500 Global, a venture capital fund based here in California that is betting big on Southeast Asia. All this and more to come. In a corner of Los Angeles, this casual deli has been named one of the best new restaurants in the world by Condé Nast Traveler. Yangban Society is the creation of Katiana Hong, a skilled chef who has cooked in Michelin-starred restaurants and is now serving up Korean fried chicken. It's not trying to take Korean cuisine and elevate it. It's not trying to take American cuisine and, and add Korean things to it. It's literally just food that's authentic to us. Hong and her team prep a menu that crosses cultural boundaries, Korean banchan, Japanese pork cutlets, and matzo ball soup. Also on site, a mini mart that's a nod to the convenience stores of South Korea and Japan. Is there a typical Young Bun Society customer and what would he or she experience when they come here? The customer base is, is like kind of all across the board. If I had to pick one, probably a young, the young Asian Americans, the newer generation. Asian American buying power is big and it's growing. According to Nielsen, it was worth $1.2 trillion in 2020. Asian Americans are the fastest growing ethnicity in the, in the country. They're growing very rapidly, um, tend to buy a lot of groceries for at-home preparation and at-home consumption. So it's a growing number of people, and even disproportionate to that, it's a very growing market for food retailers. Food retailers like brick-and-mortar giants H Mart and 99 Ranch and e-commerce players as well. We have customers from all the states, including uh, Hawaii and Alaska. Alex Joe is the CEO and founder of Yami, an online marketplace for Asian goods based in Southern California. Born in China, he came to the U.S. to study engineering in the Midwest. Joe says he started to import Asian goods because of his own struggle to source his favorite products. If you look at 2012, 2013, Alibaba, JD.com, the mainly folks domestic market in China. Amazon is like fulfill the mainstream demand. And nobody actually look at this like niche market, right? Which is Asian product for overseas. Yep. Yami sells over 300,000 products spanning a wide range of categories from beauty. Do you sell this? To toys. Yep. <laughs> Yep. And food, including its top seller from China, instant losifen, a snail-based rice noodle soup known for its infamous smell. Spicy. Sour, spicy, stinky. It's good. Yep. To boost its online offerings, Yami says they recently raised $50 million. The same month, rival We, an online grocer that offers Asian and Hispanic foods in the U.S., announced they had reeled in more than $835 million in funding. The market is hot, but headwinds are picking up. As inflation bites, Joe says his labor costs are rising, along with the cost of shipping and warehouse leasing. The pandemic has also made it harder to import goods from Asia. There was the international uh, freight supply chain problems. We don't have enough inventory in our warehouse, but the customer demand is still increasing. But Joe remains optimistic. In the wake of supply chain disruptions, Yami incorporated new business models. That includes working with homegrown partners such as American mom and pop shops looking to sell online. And business is growing thanks to a new, expanding customer base. The number of non-Asian consumers that are shopping Asian specialty stores continues to grow. Why is it that more and more non-Asian customers are buying 
Asian products. And does this have something to do with the so-called Netflix effect? Some of them are pop culture fans, you know, Asian pop culture. They love, you know, Blackpink, BTS. They love Squid Game on, on Netflix. So they start interesting in Asian pop culture. Organically, they start looking for the product and the brands behind this culture. Back at Yangban Society, Asian and non-Asian diners gather in its vibrant dining room, and they all share the same thing, hunger for a new and authentic experience. Nice.